Hello, this is Glenn Meldrum with His Presence Ministries and the Radical Truth Podcast. My website is www.ihpministry.com. I am building an isolation booth and a little recording studio here in my fifth wheel. We have a fifth wheel that has two bedrooms. We've taken this second bedroom and we have gutted it so that we're able to build the isolation booth and we're able to uh, put in an office as well. I left a couple of cabinets in that will still be a benefit for us, but this is basically where we're at right now, and I'm going to take you through the journey of building this isolation booth and the products that I use. This is part two of my building a recording studio in my 2009 DRV Mobile Suites fifth wheel. And the recording studio is so I can continue recording my podcast in a better environment and be able to record more often as I travel so that I have a good environment for recording. You can see to this point, I have built the portion of the uh, studio that's going to be the office. I have my computer in there. I put in a bamboo floor and then I put in a countertop and cabinet. There's a keyboard. Some of the cabinets I have left in here uh, that were part of the fifth wheel originally. This was a second bedroom, which I had taken out. Um, Here is the recording portion, or here's what's going to be the recording studio. And you can see that it's small, just four by three basically is what it will be. But that will be big enough for me to stand up in and to do the recording. I did a lot of research trying to find the best products to build this studio and how to accomplish soundproofing to the best of my ability. The problem is soundproofing is all about uh, mass and mass is heavy and so you can't have that in a fifth wheel. So I'm very limited in what I'm doing here. So I did some research and found that there was a few products that seemed promising. One was mass loaded vinyl and another was Peacemaker, which is very similar to Mass Loaded Vinyl. And basically what they are is they are a way to try and uh, do a little bit of soundproofing without having the major weight on it. And then I came across this other product called Mutex. And when I looked at Mutex and talked to some friends, they looked at the statistics and the uh, specs, and they said that it was probably the best product for me. And so this is what I'm going with. And here here it is in one of the rolls that it gets shipped to you in. And here's the product itself that has a uh, sound absorption material in it, and uh, which is a very interesting type of thing because it does sound absorbing, but it also does what mass load vinyl does, where it does soundproofing. And so that's what the backside is, the shiny part. Now, in my... Re- In what's going to be the recording studio, I have a window, and that's going to be a problem because that's where it's going to get a lot of sound in. And so what I've done is I've blocked it up with some material on the inside of it, and then I've used the Mutex, and I'm facing the fuzzy part, which is the sound absorption part, outward, so that it will absorb the sound that is coming in that way. And then the shiny part is the mass-loaded vinyl portion that does the soundproofing. Um, I have been recommended to go with two layers of the Mutex. And the reason is, is that I can go and put one layer that's going to be just like this, that is going to be facing outward to absorb the sound that's trying to come in and then to block it. The second layer is going to be facing the opposite direction then. It is going to be facing inward and it will be... Uh, absorbing the sound from the inside and blocking it from getting out as well. Now, I am also going to be using a rock wool insulation, and there's a few different reasons for it. Part of it is because it has such good uh, sound absorption properties, and then I got a really great deal on this particular stuff. It's 24 inches wide, but I'm going to do, be doing everything 16 inches on center, so I'm going to have to cut it down to size. Here's a little portion of it. It's two inch thick. So I have ripped two by fours and one by fours to be able to work for me. So that way there I'll be trying to make this as light as possible. And so I'll be using that as the insulation. 
And I guess that's probably it for right now. I will uh, record another one as I get a little bit farther and let you see what's going on with the whole situation. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Well, this is part three of building this studio, and I'm just going to touch on a few things, uh, which is going to be my project for today. I'm going to be putting in some of the electric. It's 12 volt, and I will be using a 12 volt dimmer, which will actually be for a fan. And then I'll be using a 12 volt switch that will be for the lights. The lights I will be using are going to be LED rope lighting, which I will put in the ceiling once I install the ceiling. And the reason why they're LED is so that they are cooler, so it's not going to heat up the studio quickly. Uh, they really won't heat it up at all because they don't get hot. And the uh, dimmer here is actually for the cooling fan. And you have to have a ventilation system in this or it gets you so hot it'd be outrageous. You wouldn't be able to be in it for that long. So what I'm going to do is I will be putting up along the wall here at the bottom a, a box that will have baffles in it. And in those ba baffles, I'll be using the Mudex to help absorb the sound. And it will be the intake. So the air will be coming in through that. And the uh, baffles are to keep it as quiet as possible. Then in the ceiling over here, once I put the ceiling in, I will put another box similar to the other one. But this one here will end up having the a uh, large 12-volt uh, computer fan that I strove to try and find the quietest one I could for a reasonable amount of money. The dimmer will be to control the fan so that I can control the speed to get the optimum amount of air flow, but also to try and get it as quiet as possible because there will be, uh, because there will be the particular speed that it will be quietest. And that's what I will have to try and figure out what it is and set it at that all the time. And so that is the project that I'll be concentrating on right now. I also this morning went and took the time to caulk all the seams in the in what's going to be the studio. And I also did it in the office as well. And that was recommended to me by a company that does and builds recording studios. And they said, you just want to stop every bit of sound coming in any way that's possible. So he said, caulk everything and just caulk it to pieces. It's cheap. And he didn't necessarily recommend the expensive, fancy, supposedly soundproofing caulk. He just said, go and use 100% uh, silicone. And so that's what I've been using. And it's really simple and it's not expensive. You know, you take about a tube to do uh, a little room like this. And so that's what I've done. And uh, it's uh, slowly coming along. In this next video, I want to show you the air boxes I made. Airflow in a recording booth is very important. It'll get hot very quickly if you don't have it. So you have to somehow get air into the studio, into the isolation booth to make it so that it remains cool. The easiest or the best way to do it is to take the cold air that's off the floor and bring it into the room and then take the hot air off the ceiling from the isolation booth and take it out. And then to try and make it quieter, you have a fan, you get a quiet fan. I'm going to be using a 12 volt, uh, a large 12 volt uh, computer fan that is supposed to be really quiet. And I will be actually sucking the air out. That way there, the sound is blowing away from the room rather than blowing into it. And so I use the Mutex, the material I'm using for the soundproofing. I put the fuzzy part on the inside here. So as the air goes through here, it'll come out of a hole here that I'll eventually put in. And that is going to be on the off the floor. The ceiling, this one here is the one off the ceiling. And uh, it will draw where the fan will be on one side and it'll be sucking from the room on the other. Now, I did get up a little bit more of the Mutex. You can see that's one wall and that's the ceiling. I don't know if you can really tell. It's slowly coming along. But it's kind of a puzzle. you got to put things together uh, in pieces because... That's just kind of the way it works, especially with a fifth wheel and putting a studio in a, in a trailer. So anyway, it's coming along, and uh, I hope this is able to help with it. Um, I just uh, stapled this on. It would be really helpful if you build these air boxes to use an air nailer and stapler. It is tedious, so it's a lot of work, um, and I still have the outside to put on each of them. I just left it open so that you could see.
it's time for another video. Let me show you what I've done so far. I have the office in. I have the computer mounted. I just have to do the finish work around it. Um, I have the computer quiet box in where the box is all lined with mutex on all sides. I just have to do the top and that's what's lacking with it. But other than that there it is working very well and the computer is still running cool. And so that's an important thing. Um, I have in one air box right there, as you can see, that's going to be the inlet, and the outlet is in a, another location. Uh, I have changed the outside of what I did here. As if you uh, remember looking at the other videos, I had Mudex on it, then I had paneling over the top of it, and I didn't like the way that was working, so I took it off. I put the paneling on, and what I'm going to end up doing is having the Mudex uh, just exposed on the outside, which I think will look uh, okay. Uh, my wife did a curtain for me uh, that helps keep out the heat and the uh, helps it make it a little more quiet. On the inside, I have the two layers of mutex, one facing outward. That's the very first uh, layer before the walls are put up. Then the insulation put in, the uh, rock wool insulation, which is uh, the stuff I got was terrible to work with, as bad as regular fiberglass, very itchy and... and uh, and just uh, a pain to work with, but I got that all up, put the mutex on, and I've put the uh, plywood over it. Now what I need to do is to uh, caulk all this, and you can see there's a vent up in the ceiling that is the uh, to draw the air out, and on the other side is the fan. Um, here I have uh, two outlets. One's going to be for electric, the other one's going to be for HDMI, and a computer monitor will be mounted on the wall there. Um, I will have a mouse built into a, a little uh, mouse stand built in here so that I can control the computer. At the bottom, I have, I have the hole and the wiring in there for the microphone and then for a USB uh, extension so I can put in it uh, the wireless uh, mouse part that, uh, so I can use the, the mouse in here. Um, the floor is in. I just have to screw it down and then I'll caulk everything. So that's basically where we're at, and uh, the next time you'll see a little bit more of a finished product. In this video, I want to show you a finished product. There's only a couple of very minor things that need to be finished, but other than that there, it is very, uh, it is a good working uh, studio. It has accomplished what I wanted. I'm very pleased with it. But let me just go over it a little bit. I ended up putting in Fostec speakers, uh, which are being uh, very nice. I, I think that they fit a small uh, studio like this. They are mounted because this is in a trailer so it can travel and I don't have to take them down. They are powered so I don't have an issue with trying to have a separate power amp. I put in a BenQ monitor which uh, you know that has been fine. I lined the walls with the extra um, sound absorbing panels uh, that I had from the studio itself because it's helpful to try and get the room next to the studio to the isolation booth as quiet as possible as well. And then I ended up taking the paneling down that was on here that I had put over the mutex and I put new mutex up and finished it and it came out very nice. I ended up putting black uh, uh, woodwork around the door and, and everything. I put mutex on the door itself. I put a lock on it. Uh, just a deadbolt like this to be able to stop the door from opening while in travel. And this came out very nice. I think it came out good. The inside, you can see, uh, is uh, in the studio foam. I use maroon and gray to try and give it just a little uh, different contrast to it. I put LED lighting in the ceiling to try and keep heat out so that I wouldn't have to deal with heat. I put in a new monitor uh, here. The old monitor was just an old flat panel and it put out a lot of heat, got the studio hot really, really fast. And so this LED one puts out very little heat and that is uh, that has been very good as well. I'm using an AKG mic, not an expensive thing, 150 bucks or so. Uh, it's okay, not fabulous. Uh, I'd love to have an expensive one, but just not in my budget. Uh, I'd like to get a little better sound, but I'm pretty pleased with how it's coming out. I took the mic stand, a Hercules mic stand I had, I took the legs off and I mounted it to the floor on an ice and mounted it to an isolation block to try and keep the vibration of the floor out 
of it, and then I just put a brace on the wall. I put a mouse uh, pad on the wall so that I could control the monitor as I'm going through uh, for the podcast and have notes on the wall. So it's come out very well, uh, and I think it's doing a pretty good job. The next video, I will look at the problem that all studios have, and that's going to be the ventilation system. And I'll just share with you what I've accomplished and what I still need to do. In this final video on building the studio in a fifth wheel trailer, I'm going to just deal with the challenges of ventilation. Uh, when you have a small little room like this, ventilation is always going to be a problem. Uh, when it's all soundproof and all airtight as much as you're able to, especially in a in a trailer, the problem is going to be uh, moving air in there. If you're only in there for five minutes, if it's not the heat of summer, it might be okay. You could probably handle it. But since I'm doing a podcast, it's about a half hour. Uh, you could just get sweating in there in no time. And that can even be in, in the winter months. So ventilation is very important. I went and designed this originally with ventilation in mind. And so I took some advice after doing a bunch of research and everything else. And the idea is to take the cold air off the floor and take it through the studio and to bring it out uh, at the top of the studio uh, where you're going to draw the, the hot air out. And the further idea is that you... You do a drawing of it, not a blowing of it in. So the the motor, the fan, is up high and it's drawing out the uh, hot air. So the problem is, is getting the movement there. Uh, originally, I started with uh, a, a, a fan like that, uh, just a small little fan uh, for a computer, and that was very inadequate. Then I went to a better fan this particular the first one was just very very noisy the second one i went to is a good fan about the same money as the other one and that was very quiet but it just could not bring the airflow through it so i did more and more research trying to find what would work and i came up with this i ended up getting the quietest blower motor i could find that goes into a duct system for a house or whatever it might be and they said it was only supposed to have 31 decibels, but it's more than that. It's, it is rather noisy. And so I ended up getting a thing that looks like a muffler to a car, but what it actually is, it is uh, just a sound dampener. And so I, I got that. The thing's pretty cheap, and so I put that in. I ended up making a, 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 a secondary box so I could mount this muffler in it. The original box right here is... Uh, was mounted and I had the fans originally put here hoping just to blow out and that would be enough but I could just never get the movement or I got the volume was just too much. So what I've done this far is I've lined this with Mutex so all this is Mutex here all around it and I have a cover that goes over here that's with Mutex and it blows out and it's doing okay. It is producing noise but if you have to have noise, it is at, it's at least a good noise because it's very easy for me to uh, take that out with my sound reduction uh, program within my, uh, the program I use to record and to edit, which is SoundForge. And so that's the, the basic thing with it. I'm still having the noise issue, though. So I've gotten some more sound absorption material, and I'm going to stuff it in here and see if that will solve the problem and try and reduce the, the volume a little bit more. If that does not work, the one final option I have is to put it into the basement of the fifth wheel. And so I would take it uh, out of the box here. I would take it down the wall here, and I'd bring it into the floor underneath the fifth wheel, and then it would dump out into uh, the outside uh, through uh, a system I've already kind of figured out. That's going to be a lot of work, and so I'm just kind of hoping that maybe this will be enough and uh, it will suffice. But anyway, uh, that has been my journey with it. I'm pretty pleased with where it's come out, except for the ventilation system. That is always kind of a headache. Um, and so I've read a lot on it, and uh, it's almost like nobody has a really simple answer for something like this. Uh, and so I'll still do my research if there's anything better I can come up with and make it uh, a little cleaner sound. 
But that's it. I hope it gives some help and advice to some people. And uh, thank you for listening, and God bless you. Goodbye.